If you love a great bottle of bubbles without the hefty price tag, it's time to look at the Languedoc. This slice of southern France was once known as a bulk region, but now that's changing. This dynamic region is known for reds, but it also produces a staggering amount of white wines in all styles at great price points, from complex sparklers to crisp, zesty whites. Join creative Fabian and I on a journey to meet the people behind these exciting wines. That all starts right now. Packed up, we're all ready to go to start the trip. Who we call? Where's Matthew? Oh man, it's gonna be terrible. <laughs> We are going to Languedoc. We're gonna start by bubbles. Limou to wake up the palate. Limou to me is super exciting, really affordable, delicious bubbles. Our first stop is Antech, and we're greeted by one of the family members, Francoise. And Edmond Antech, my grandfather who gave the name to the company. You know, when uh, it's a little uh, domain, you do nearly everything. So you do the sale, you do the vinification, you do the tasting, you go to the post office and so on. So Why should people choose Le Mou? Many, many reasons. The first one is that uh, we invented the bubbles. So the first trace of a sparkling wine in the world is in Le Mou in 1544. And that was uh, 150 years before Dom Perignon. A monk in the beautiful abbey of Saint-Hilaire close to here by mistake, put into a bottle of wine that had not finished the fermentation. Later, when they decided to drink the wine, they found it was uh, bubbly or sparkling. We are the combination between Mediterranean style, in the deep Mediterranean area in the south of France, very close to Spain. The second major point, our vineyard is 400 meter eight. And this is uh, very good uh, for the acidity, the quality of the freshness uh, of the wine. And much more affordable. That's yeah. right. <laughs> and much more affordable, unfortunately for us. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> the harvest has started at Antesh. Wine grapes made for sparkling wine need acidity, like this bunch of Chardonnay. Not so sweet, plenty of acidity. Francoise's son, Baptiste, heads up the production and directs the grapes. This Chardonnay is crushed, distemmed, and now it's heading for the press. Are you blending a lot of vintages or mostly making vintage wine? So we are really attached to one year, one climate. We tend to have cuvées that have the same style but quite different profile year after year. Now it's time to taste the pressed juice that will become the base wine. Think of it as a pure white grape juice with more acidity. This is the first day of harvest 2021. Very excited, but it's only the first day so we have to be uh, white. <laughs> we take a look in the cellar before the tasting. There are three different types of sparkling wines made in Lemoux, and two of them, Blanquette de Lemoux and Cremat de Lemoux, are made using the champagne method. This means there's a second fermentation in the bottle to produce the bubbles. Therefore, there's extra equipment needed to produce the wines, which is why high-quality sparkling wines cost a little bit more. Antesh is bottling today, which means you get to see what the sparkling wine cork looks like before it's put into the bottle. The cork will take the size of a mushroom once it is in the bottle. Back in the tasting room, we try some sparkling wines made from the grape Mozac. The Blanquette de Lemou wines in the Appalachian must be at least 90% Mozac. For me, Mozac always has a really distinctive, really distinctive flavor for me. A lot of green apple, a pine tree, fennel, and that's what you get here. You're very passionate about Mozac, huh? I'm crazy about it. They should definitely build a club to promote Mozac. This is incredible grape variety. Now on to all the Cremant de Lemou, which can be made with the grapes Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, Chenin Blanc, and Mozac. Fabian and I are blown away by the Grand Cuvée. Wow, it smells like champagne. No, blind it would be like, on the blind taste, just on nose people would go for champagne, definitely. Uh, it does, it has, it really has the complexity, the yeastiness of champagne, the brew. Bon degustation. Belle, belle. Belle, belle degustation. Nice taste. <laughs> With all that action, we're hungry, and the Appalachian of Lemu has prepared a picnic for us. The director of the Appalachian, yes. Macherlin, pours a few wines and sets the table. You know, Matthew, she had to wake up at 6 in the morning just to cook for you. <laughs> you know, you're a pain in the ass, Matthew. The president of Lemu, Jean Fo, joins us as we taste through more wines, including a couple of still wines. I seldom get excited about still Lemu wines, but the red catches my attention. The Lemu Rouge, Merlot, Cabernet Franc, Serra is actually pretty darn good. 
Mahalin and Jean Fao talk about the future and the struggles of the Lemu Appalachian. You're in Languedoc, so it's always warm, but the problem is water. And in France, when you do Appalachian wine, you're not allowed to water. Fortunately, this vintage hasn't been super dry, and we take a look at the vineyards. Oui? The Chenin Blanc and Pinot Noir look good, but the Mozac isn't quite ripe Mozart, yet. Mozart. Is it good? It's a bit sour. <laughs> <laughs> High in the village of Antuniac is the family estate Delmas. This small family estate produces less than 100,000 bottles a year. Batis Delmas of the family greets us at the tasting room. Just three hectares and now the winery have 30 hectares and all the winery is the organic wine. Does it look good for a seller? Yeah, a real seller. Yeah, it's artisanal, not a factory, you know. Just the best quality, not yeah, to... Yeah. Baptiste is fresh off a stint in Australia, where he fell in love with using stems in Pinot Noir. This technique is used sometimes in Burgundy, and around the world. It adds some complexity and structure to the Pinot Noir. The finish vinification and test the wine, oh, it's good. I think in come back in home and I try stems in Pinot Noir. What did your dad say? Yeah, and I talk uh, with my father and put the stems in a tank. What? No. Yes. <laughs> I can tell Baptiste really likes Pinot Noir. <laughs> yeah. Delmas has some of the highest vineyards in Lemu. The views are beautiful, the air is cool, and this place doesn't even look like the Mediterranean. We're pretty high, about almost 500 meters, and it, it is quasi-alpine, uh, quasi-alpine, the vegetation. We find out that Baptiste's sister actually lives in Champagne. She doesn't argue the sister of Baptiste because she knows that they do better here in Limou than in Champagne. That's life. I think Fabian's going to get us kicked out of Champagne. I've been a fan of Delmas sparklers in the past, this but this vintage of Cuvée Audace blows me away. That's really good. It's a little riper than champagne, but you still have some of that complexity. <laughs> it is definitely better than some of the champagne I have uh, had that cost some time to tell about. Yeah. Baptiste also started his own line of wine, which his father approves of. And, uh, my father, oh, he's good. And change. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. He's, he's very different. There aren't a ton of fine Pinot Noirs made in this region, oh, but this one from Baptiste impresses nice. us. Very nice Pinot Noir. It's quite elegant for a South Pinot. This is a lot of the old, uh, old style in Sonoma County in California. Very nice Pinot Noir. Very impressed. So I'm going to ask you if there's good Pinot Noir down here. Finally, I found one. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about our hair. <laughs> Look at my beautiful hair. <laughs> we close the day by heading to Gaida. This modern producer is doing great work with grapes throughout the south of France. The estate is stunning. I've enjoyed the reds in the past, but this time, the whites impress me. What is your name? Marion. En passant, 2020, Grenache, Macabre, Marsan, Roussan. I like the sound of the blend, so... It's free style. Blending grapes from the Languedoc and the Roussillon region, because they're different, it's not the same region. The Chenin Blanc from Gaida catches me off guard. Uh, That's a good wine. Is this aged in wood? In oak? Uh, no. Yes, yes. Oh. Yes, the, the part in the um, egg. Oh, it's an egg shape. Fabian, look at the camera. It's South Africa. I think it's really good. It reminds me like South Africa. It reminds me of but South Africa. But it's made in Languedoc. So. However, the Grenache Gris is my favorite. I like Grenache Gris and Grenache Blanc so much. Which one do you prefer? Grenache Gris, I prefer. Why? More character, more mineral, more crispy. And usually, if you find it, it's from very old vineyards. What I like about uh, Grenache Gris and Grenache Blanc, Roussan maybe, to a certain extent, it's so phenolic. That's what I mean by that, it just covers the mouth. It's more crisp acidity. Why are you in focus now and I'm not? Because I rule the video, you're <laughs> not. <laughs> Been spitting all day, I'm gonna have a little Grenache Gris to finish. <laughs> Fabian was getting pretty hangry. He was getting pretty hungry. Are you happy that we hit, we're getting something? Yeah. How happy are you? I cannot smile in the camera. <laughs> what are we doing in here in the small room? We're having picnic with ham and real cheese. Mmm, stinky cheese. Because we got screwed by mosquitoes outside. I think I get about eight bites per minute out there. One, two, three, four. 
nine more nipples today. Thank you. Right on the Mediterranean Sea, you'll find the region of Picpoul de Pinay. It's home to the variety Picapoul, which makes fresh, crispy white wines. Domaine de Petit Rubier is one of the producers here farming Picapoul organically. Owner and winemaker Olivier Asen greets us. For people that don't understand what Picapoul is, what kind of a wine is it? The speciality of Picapoul de Pinay is acidity and fruit. So basically Picapoul, you will find prices between 450 to 9 euros about. But now Olivier is working well also with a few other producers and cooperatives. They're developing a special range. They're aiming to put a bit more premium style of Picpoul. So Picpoul always is seeing stainless steel, right? Never, never barrel fermented or can you... No, 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 no wood. Can you barrel ferment Picpoul? Yes, it's possible, but you, have, you don't have the, the, the same style of wine. Now it's time to taste. I generally like Picpoul, actually. It's limey, green apple-y. Got a little, little lees contact. Like the Muscadet of the South. What other flavors you get out of it? Olivier says that basically is always waiting longer because he doesn't want to get over acidic wines. So I generally think of Picpoul as uh, just only a food wine. I could drink that by itself. Fabienne obsessed with the birds. You like the birds? Yeah. Celeste, the coordinator of the appellation of Picpoul de Pinay, has organized a seafood picnic for us. It's like the Italian job. You think? I'm Mr. Statham. I'm in the Italian job. Ah, look at all these cars. We're all tailing each other. We're going on a mission. Mission is called Picpoul and fresh seafood. We seafood. The four cooperative wineries of Picpoul de Pinay are represented, and they start popping open the bottles. Man, these guys are fast. Only Picpoul de Pinay can produce this type of bottles, really protected. I really enjoy Picpoul de Pinay, but I'm really impressed with the new Patience range. They're Picpoul de Pinays that spend more time on the lees and use higher quality grapes. Picpoul, you can get a lot of limey flavors, but with, with age, there's a little bit of more roundness. A little more yogurt from the lees contact. Lovely, 12 euro wine, I think it's lovely. Bring the wine with the oysters and also with, uh, with cheese. Like Picpoul de Pinay and oysters, it's always the same story and it works, like I said before. Cheers! Cheers. <laughs> the oyster is sweet. And a bit salty. Mm. Florence Sac, I are proud of Picpoul de Pinay because they call it Le Picpoul de Pinay. And, uh, that means the. Pic Le, this one, <laughs> and no other one. Whether it's seafood or cheese and bread, it's all good with this refreshing white wine. Picpoul de Pinay! When I think of the Languedoc, my first impression is big, meaty red wines. However, I've been impressed with the whites and sparklers we've had on this trip. It's changed my perception of the region. Get out there and try new wines from the Languedoc. They're great and they won't hurt your wallet. I'm sure you'll be as pleasantly surprised as I am. I'd love to stay as there's a lot more to explore in the Languedoc, but we have to move on. There's a lot more ahead. <laughs>